Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of another large diaphragm multi-pattern condenser microphone. So today we're reviewing this guy, the Rode NT2A full recording kit. If you are interested in picking this microphone kit up, it will set you back around $400. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. Lightning bolt, jeez. What in the... What are you doing in here? Who are you? Lightning bolt. Jeez. What is... It's a, it's a bean bag. It's not a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Just leave me alone, man. I don't... Lightning bolt. What the hell is happening? This makes no sense. Don't ask questions. <laughs> then this whole thing falls apart. <laughs> For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the 18i20 second gen with the gain set just at around 130. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you are going to get the microphone. You'll also get a shock mount with a pop filter built onto it, and the mounting bracket has a 5 8 and 3 8 inch threading built into it, which is super awesome. You'll get a dust cover, an XLR cable, some documentation, and a sticker! Next up, as far as the build quality, the microphone feels incredibly sturdy. It is a very hefty thick boy, if I do say so myself. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, and it does have a tiny bit of give to it, but nothing out of the ordinary. On the front, you will find three switches, a three-way polar pattern selection switch for cardioid, figure eight, or omnidirectional, a three-way high pass filter selection for off, 40 hertz or 80 hertz, and a three-way pad selector for off, negative 5 dB or negative 10 dB. As you go around the microphone, there is nothing else, and on the bottom, you'll find the XLR port. Then as far as the specs, the microphone has a cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 36 decibels, a self noise of only 7 dBA, an impedance of 200 ohms, a max SPL of 147 dB or 157 dB with the 10 dB pad engaged, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now let's go ahead and walk through all the polar patterns on this microphone. So right now I am speaking into the cardioid polar pattern and this is how the audio sounds. Now I am on the figure eight polar pattern which picks up audio in the front and the back and has null areas on the side and this is how it sounds. And lastly, we are on the omnidirectional polar pattern at the exact same distance. This picks up audio 360 degrees around the microphone, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I am spinning around the Rode NT2A on the cardioid mode to show you how it sounds from the side. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here's how it sounds from the rear. Continue around to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotate and end at the front of the mic. Spinning around the road NT2A on the omnidirectional mode and there should be very minimal change in the tonal characteristics as we move all the way around the microphone's capsule. And now on the bi-directional or figure eight mode, we should have a dead area at 90 degrees on both sides. Continue around to the rear of the microphone which should pick up the audio fairly well again. Continue around to the second 90 degree dead area and then rotate and end at the front. Now I'm right on top of the microphone with the high pass filter disengaged and this is how the audio sounds. Same position, but now I have engaged the 40 Hertz high pass filter and this is how it affects the proximity effect. And lastly, I have switched over to the 80 Hertz high pass filter and this is how it sounds when we are right on top of the microphone. Now I am right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone and here's how it sounds. One foot away from the microphone. <laughs> Two feet away from the microphone. And about four feet away from the microphone. Now let's test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto.
Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Alright sad boy gamers, now we type in on the sad W keys. Because this microphone does come with a shock mount, I am going to go ahead and tap the desk to see how it does a rejecting that type of noise. And now I am tapping on the boom arm to see how much of that the shock mount rejects. Now I am going to go ahead and tap the microphone's body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I am speaking into the Rode NT2A on the cardioid mode with no high pass filter engaged in a decently treated room and here's how it sounds. And now I'm speaking into the Rode NT2A in the cardioid mode in a completely untreated room. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Rode NT2A and the Rode NT1A. So right now I am speaking into the NT2A on the cardioid mode with no high pass filter and no pad engaged. And this is how it sounds. And now I am speaking into the Rode NT1A at the exact same distance with the exact same gain setting. This is just a cardioid microphone and this is how the audio compares. And just for good measure, I also wanted to include a quick test of the Rode NT1. Exact same distance, again, this is just a cardioid microphone. Exact same gain setting as well, and this is how the microphone compares. <laughs> what I need so I can test them all and put them in your feed if I only knew what to do with this moment that I'm in I'm in an audio binge save me or more importantly save my wallet <laughs> I honestly can't stop buying microphones. At this point, it is a serious problem. But I gotta test them all, right? Right? Tell me yes. Justify my purchases. All right. So I really wasn't sure what I was going to think about this microphone when I first started testing with it. But I must say that I have come out of the review pleasantly surprised. And first up, in terms of pros, the microphone is pretty dang versatile. With all of the polar patterns, which are all pretty dang usable, the multiple pads, and the multiple high pass filters. It also has an insanely quiet noise floor at negative 7 dBA, as well as an insanely high max SPL of 157 dB. So you can throw this in front of pretty much any sound source without worrying about overdriving the microphone. Also, all of the accessories seem really well built and they do their job well, and the microphone's build quality feels excellent. But then in terms of cons, if you are looking for a microphone that rejects a lot of background noise, this is not it. It seems to pick up everything. It is very unforgiving in that department. And also the weight of the microphone is pretty high at 800 grams. So what are my overall thoughts on this microphone? On the electric guitar, if you throw on the 80 hertz high pass filter and place the microphone a little bit farther to the side of the speaker, you can get some really amazing and warm tones. I particularly liked this microphone on the lead tone using that miking technique. 
Then on the acoustic guitar, I think that is my favorite sound source that I put this microphone in front of. It is just such a vibrant and detailed sound, and then it does have a full sound without being muddy. It is just wonderful on the acoustic guitar. Then on singing, the microphone is very crisp and airy sounding. So if you're trying to capture all of the higher frequency characteristics of somebody's voice, this mic will accomplish that for you. And lastly, for spoken word, I think the mic offers a very detailed and articulate sound while maintaining a smooth midsection, which I am a big fan of. It's kind of a mix of the NT1 and the NT1A to my ears. And now, would I recommend this microphone? I think so. I think it's a better sounding and more versatile version of the NT1A style microphone. The NT2A has a similar amount of detail in the upper frequencies compared to the NT1A, but it is just smoother to listen to, meaning it comes across much more pleasing. And also, it has a warmer and rounder low end, which in my opinion, helps complement that exaggerated boost in the upper frequencies. So if you're in a well-treated room, or if you're recording in a room where you want to capture the tone of the room, maybe you also want multiple polar patterns, and you want a very detailed and clear microphone sound, then I think this is a great option for you in the $400 price range. Okay, if you found this video fun, interesting, or lightning bolt, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. I hate myself. If you wanna hang out in the Discord server, there's a link in the description. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I love them so much, you can do so by clicking that join button beneath the video and joining at the $5 tier or higher. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye. Lightning bolts.